My name is Rajiv Jangiani. I'm an instructor of psychology at Kwantlen Polytechnic University. Well, I think when people ask me about what open education is, it's really good to ask about what contemporary education looks like. And the opposite of open would be closed. So right now we have a situation where most of our students uh, don't have access to the course materials that we consider to be required. We want to create an environment in which we create meaningful, authentic learning experiences for them. But we deprive them of our course materials by not thinking about access and accessibility. We want them to become skillful, but yet we ask them to do things in which they do not see the greater purpose or meaning and create objects that will only be seen by one person. So I think open education allows us to reconsider what we consider to be normal practice in education in a way that unleashes pedagogical innovation and student potential. Well, I think any time one talks about innovation in teaching, uh, it involves revisiting, questioning assumptions about pedagogy, about one's teaching philosophy. But there are also structural barriers in place. You think about traditional learning management systems where we host our courses, and each course is completely separate, like its own little silo, like knowledge is discrete and not interdisciplinary and not interactive and not cumulative. So I think the barriers are mostly mental, are mostly psychological, and thereby structural as well, in terms of how universities are structured, how programs are structured, and how instructors are used to obtaining, disseminating their instructional resources. Open education is really about intent. The philosophy of openness is about sharing, it's about collaboration, it's about transparency and accountability. It's about developing personally and as a scholar in a way that is not hidden. Open education in its simplest form would involve using and even producing resources that are available to the commons, to the public, not hidden. But it would also involve students producing resources for the commons and not just for the instructor. And in many ways, open education, I think, reflects a similar sentiment that we're seeing in scholarship the drive for open scholarship and open science practices. Why should, for example, the Canadian taxpaying public that are funding much of the research at our institutions be asked to pay an additional $45 to read the fruits of that labor? There's a lot of things that we do every day that are deeply questionable, and open education starts to pull up those threads just a little bit. I think practically, in, in my experience, a lot of instructors don't know about open education, a lot of faculty. So part of it is awareness raising. And when people start to get a sense of what is out there, they start to realize how much they haven't been questioning. Faculty love to talk about academic freedom and we love getting our, on our high horse about it. But I think when it comes to uh, our pedagogy, we don't, we don't think about our academic freedom often enough. So uh, again, in my experience, it's about awareness and after that, experiencing it. And I haven't seen very few people look back once they've jumped into the open water. So open educational resources vary greatly in quality. Might, might this, much the same, I might add, as, as traditional course materials. Um, but we do know, for example, major, major surveys uh, in the United States and now in British Columbia as well, uh, that the majority uh, of faculty uh, view open educational resources as the same as or superior in quality to traditional materials. And part of the reason why they view it as superior is because they're not locked in a proprietary platform. And you're able to move from doing what many of us do now, which is, I think most instructors now bend their courses to map onto the structure of a traditional textbook. Whereas what we ought to be doing is modifying the instructional materials to serve, uh, to serve and suit our pedagogical and course goals. And it's those additional permissions to revise, to remix, to adapt, to contextualize the resources themselves and even involve our students in that process that really unleashes the potential of high quality OER. I think students, oddly enough, have, have the most to gain over here. In terms of access, tremendously, whether it's cost savings or portability or permanent access. Imagine if students did not have to take out a student loan 
to buy their course materials for a semester. They didn't have to choose between groceries and textbooks. If they didn't feel compelled to resell their resources at the end of the semester, if they were interested in lifelong learning and could keep those resources. But beyond all of that, it's also the potential of open pedagogy for students to participate in the creation of resources, to complete meaningful assignments that will be seen by more than just their instructor, for their work to truly be an electronic portfolio that serves them and represents who they are. They're typically based on Creative Commons licenses, and there's any number of them, and for somebody who doesn't know what they look like, they're a bit like hieroglyphics initially. But the nice thing is it allows the person who creates these resources to choose in advance how anybody else in the future might, be, uh, might interact with them. Whether they are allowed to just reuse them, but just give them credit always. Whether you will permit other people to use them even for commercial purposes, that's up to you. Whether you wish to mandate that anyone who uses or revises or tweaks or makes a derivative work from your resources must, similar to you, share it with the public with a similar license. With an open educational resource, it's typically the author that holds the license and the author that would assign a Creative Commons license that they would like. Um, Creative Commons licenses are issued in perpetuity, so you can't revoke them if you say that it's open and anyone can use it. It's open and anyone can use it, absolutely. But you will always be credited um, as the source of that. But I think there's many reasons why universities are, are doing this more and more, whether it's MIT engaging in uh, the production of open courseware, or Rice University uh, in Houston uh, with its massive OpenStax college initiative. Um, and I think part of it is about universities themselves rethinking what they stand for. And it's not about the content. MIT says, here, take our content, because that's not what you come to MIT for, it's not the information. Especially today, anyone with a smartphone, and if they know where to look, has access to everything that's in a textbook that I could possibly give them. They come for, to me for something much more than content. And I think that's part of the, uh, the part of the realization, this move away from territoriality and this move in terms of embracing innovation and giving it away without losing control.